So last week I talked about wave particle duality, this this very odd concept in the subatomic world, and how it manifested in light. How light sometimes acts like a particle and sometimes acts like a wave. Now, if the weirdness stopped there, we might be able to sleep at night, but we can't sleep at night because it gets even weirder. Because if you're like, okay, it's just light, just whatever. Light's going to be weird and we can deal with that. No, it turns out everything's weird. Matter. That's right, matter. The stuff you and me have both particle and wave properties depending on the situation, which is very, very weird indeed. And the first realization of this came uh, from a French physicist named uh, Louis de Broglie. Everyone, I can't, I can't pronounce that name. De Broglie? I think it's de Broglie. De Broglie. That's what we said in physics class. Uh, Louis de Broglie. Um, made a connection because uh, prior to him we had we had Max Planck's work which related uh, which dealt with light and related the energy contained in light to the frequency of the light or the wavelength of light through a constant called Planck's constant he didn't name it himself that came later he wasn't that narcissistic but it happened so it told it told you like how chunky light was at a fundamental level uh, so Louis de Broccoli came, comes over and says, hey, wait a minute, light has energy, light has momentum, it has a wavelength, right? But a moving particle, like say an electron, an electron has momentum, electron has energy, maybe an electron has a wavelength. So we put that out there, it's just a pure hypothesis, like, hey, hey, maybe an electron has a wavelength. And, but then you immediately start asking some really, really good questions like, what does it mean for an electron to have a wavelength? Like an electron's like a tiny little bullet, dude. It's, it's just a little, like, look, I can hold an electron in my hand. What do you mean it's a wave or it has wave-like properties? And so everyone thought it was nuts. No, no one thought it was nuts. But we started doing experiments with electrons. And we started replicating some experiments we had already done with light. So we had done experiments with light where we where there were two narrow slits and we shone light through the narrow slits and then let the light project on a screen behind it. And this was done in the early 1800s by Thomas Young and it's called the Young's Double Slit Experiment. And it shows how the wave nature of light comes out in these experiments because the light would interfere with itself in very, very interesting ways and you'd end up with a pattern. You'd end up like with stripes on the opposite end, exactly as if you had sent water waves through these two narrow little slits and the water waves added up and destroyed each other in very creative ways and you end up with these stripes at the other end. So we started shooting electrons through double slits because, hey, why not? It's early 1900s, got nothing better to do. And lo and behold, we get stripes at the other end. What? Like, like think about it, think about it. You're shooting electrons, tiny little bullets, through some narrow slits, like pew, 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 pew. And somehow, like there'll be a lot of electrons here, not a lot next to them, and then a, a lot will land over here, and then not a lot, and then a lot, and a lot. Why is an electron acting like a wave? What is the wave? Where is it? I mean, I can see a water wave. I can conceptualize an electromagnetic wave, but what's waving with an electron? What's doing the wiggling? So then we invented quantum mechanics, another episode, and we came up with the math to describe all this, the behavior of electrons, you know, going through, uh, putting into words is hard. These are the various interpretations of quantum mechanics, like how do we actually describe this stuff? And I'm going to give you like the default explanation, the Copenhagen interpretation, this is the most commonly accepted interpretation of quantum, of quantum mechanics. Take it for what you will. To me, they're they're just, you know, words. To me, the math matters the most, but no one listens to me. In the Copenhagen interpretation, the wave that we associate with an electron 
is, is a wave of where the electron might be the next time we go looking for it. So an electron really isn't a little tiny bullet when it's traveling alone all by its lonesome. It's only a bullet when you actually see it. When you go looking for an electron and you start bouncing light off it, interacting with it, like, boom, now there's, now there's an electron. There it is. But when you're not looking, when there's no interactions, nothing, then the wavy nature comes out. And the electron might be here, but it might be over here, might be over here, might be over here. There's a wave equation, a mathematical equation that describes a wave of where the electron might be the next time you go looking for it. So when you're shooting these electrons through the slits, as they travel, as they propagate, they're not little bullets, they're little white clouds of where they might be. And these clouds, since they're described by waves, the Schrodinger wave equation to be specific, they interact with each other, just like ocean waves do, just like electromagnetic waves do. And then when these clouds, so you can imagine like, okay, there might be an electron here, there might be some electron here. They go through the slits and they start interacting with each other in a very complicated way, exactly like waves would. And it kind of spreads out where you might find the electron. Then when that wave finally hits the screen, that is a, a measurement, that is an interaction, the wave function goes away and it's replaced with a particular location of where that electron could be found. And it will be most likely to be found along a center strip, not likely to be found next to it, then likely to be found next to it, you'll get these stripes. So slowly over time, one electron at a time, you build up the pattern of these stripes. That's the Copenhagen interpretation, that the thing that is waving, the thing that is wiggling when an electron or any particle is moving around, is a wave of probability. It's a wave of where you might find it the next time you look. And those waves can do all sorts of wavy things, like interfere with each other, and that's how you get patterns like this. Now, that does mean that you and me have wave properties. We're a little bit wavy, we're a little bit wiggly, but since we're so big, we have a lot of mass, we have a lot of momentum, our wave nature is very, very, very tiny. So don't go throwing yourself through narrow slits anytime soon. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and go to patreon.com slash pmsutter to help me keep making those sh these shows. See you next time.